Right, so um, Tintagel in the Kingdom of Heaven. Um, and, uh, but I'm going to be looking at uh, a few things here. First of all, I'll just explain a little bit about my own uh, role in this. Uh, I have, I'm a stakeholder in two different areas. One is I'm the programme leader of a degree course from the uh, Plymouth University in Archaeology, uh, but in Truro, uh, delivered at Truro, uh, Truro College in Cornwall. And also I'm a member of the Gorsif, which is like the uh, Welsh I said for and the, the Breton Gorsif, it's part of the Bardic movement. So I'm involved in two, two areas of this. Um, let's see if I point that one. Yeah. Uh, and here, here on this one here is, um, this is uh, the excavations uh, pointing inwards to, to the mainland there. There's the churches up there somewhere, Mat St. Mat Materiana. Um, up, up, down this, this way, somewhere over there, is the, um, it, uh, the late medieval uh, ruins. And these are part of the early medieval structures. And it's where those latest inscriptions have been found, if you've been following the thing about Tintagel and a number of my former students and current students working on that with the um, Cornwall Archaeological Unit. And uh, you can see just there the location of Tintagel, uh, just in the northern part of Cornwall there. Now, what I don't propose in this thing is to go over all the minutiae of the um, of the, all the problems and things, all the all the arguments about uh, the, the bridge. If you've been following again, there's a whole controversy about a bridge. Before that, was a controversy about a uh, a sort of uh, sculpture. And, um, well, the one in metal, one in the, in the carving in the stone, and so on. Uh, before that, of course, there was further controversies. Uh, about uh, signposting and everything with uh, English heritage uh, sort of um, notice boards being defaced and things all taken down and so on. Uh, but I'm not going to go into all the, the details on that. Um, this is, by the way, the Penryn Mock Mare competition. And this, uh, this was the, this one here, this guy here, was the candidate, <laughs> one of the candidates. <coughs> Okay, so uh, to look at this, I'm going to look at uh, two things, Plato's Republic uh, and uh, Phaedrus. Uh, Plato has a scheme for looking at um, uh, this <coughs> idea of the theory of the soul um, and about how, um, how you move, make progress, how you move forward with things, with competing factions. And there, there are three parts of this. You can look at it, uh, most people concentrate on this, this logical one, but, um, uh, in this case, we're looking at things like historic detail, um, legal arguments, all this kind of thing, which um, everyone gets bogged down in. And also versus the mythology, which is another uh, bit of, not just to, in terms of controversy, uh, but also um, a, a subject for some confusion among members of the public, what they're looking at uh, sometimes, whether they're looking at something that's mythological, whether it's, it's uh, real, in some sense. Uh, next thing is um, the uh, spirited one here, um, and this is uh, more about sort of, um, uh, in this case I'm looking at uh, things like uh, the arguments of colonialism, nationalism, uh, the whole uh, business about um, people's uh, motivations here, and then finally the appet appetitive one, um, and this is uh, this idea of uh, things that you um, uh, well, your appetite, what you, uh, what you seek, what, what sustains you in this thing. And here, uh, there are arguments which are perhaps more common also uh, to um, heritage just generally, uh, things about over-commercialisation versus uh, uh, um, sort of um, involving uh, local artists and, and, and um, uh, uh, writers and other sort of people and me members of the public to get inspired by a place rather than simply feel that they are just being made use of. Uh, now, this is a s similar sort of thing, uh, but it's a rather simplified version of the same thing. Uh, this is from uh, another of Plato's works, Phaedrus, with a charioteer with two horses, one which is uh, pretty much on going on the right uh, le in the right lines, is, uh, and another one which is uh, 
a bit spirited and tries to get the chariot to veer off in other directions. Um, I will, I'm mostly going to do the first one, but there will be points where I point out this is a, a good analogy for things. Um, so start off with the uh, logical, historical and legal. And um, here this is where people get bogged down. In fact, I'm very grateful in this, uh, this uh, case to um, Win Scart uh, from English Heritage, because up to that point, I had, I'd been avoiding this. My Facebook and all sorts of social media were full of people arguing uh, again and again. It, it's a sort of groundhog day in Cornwall because these issues come up again and again. They, have, they, just have a di they might have a different subject matter, but the same people line up with very similar arguments. And uh, I didn't feel really that I needed to get too bogged down in that. But having seen uh, some things, I, I, I was rather interested in all the different uh, arguments and different parts of this, because Tintagel isn't just simply uh, English heritage. It's, it's owned by the Duchy of Cornwall. Um, the English heritage run it. Uh, but it also has a number of other protections. So, for example, it's the Triple SI, a site of special scientific importance. It's also an AMB, Cornwall uh, Area of Outstanding Nat Nat Natural Beauty. Um, and also, it's also um, a rig site, a regionally important geological site. So it's got all these, uh, as well as all the scheduled monument stuff. So it, there's a lots of different th things in there. And uh, I think the um, interesting thing was that um, with all these different uh, pr levels of uh, protection and stuff, there was actually, um, in some ways, uh, surprisingly... Uh, little involvement with some of the uh, the other areas um, in terms of the public debate. Uh, Wynn took me around, for example, parts of the uh, the island part of Tintagel, and there's all sorts of areas with uh, rare plants and things uh, growing on it and so on, and uh, with all sorts of issues in terms of changing the footpath because uh, people are trampling over all sorts of rare plants and uh, amphibians and God knows what else were uh, were being disturbed, um, but also the, the problems for health and safety, uh, the people um, finding they've taken on far too much getting up there, or going down to the bottom of the gift shop and the, uh, and the ticket office are, and then finding they look it up and see just how, uh, what a climb it is, and they give up. And also people getting up there, particularly in the height of summer, it's crowds, how to get people out if anyone's ill, helicopters flying in, all those problems, high winds there, you imagine all sorts of the problems. So there are a lot of really uh, important issues which, uh, which actually prompted the need for this, um, this whole business with the bridge. Um, I'm not saying the bridge was necessarily the answer, but the, the, um, the problems were, were, were very real um, and still are very real. Uh, I think the issue is more in how this process ran. ran. I'm more interested in the, the shape of this debate, really, rather than the individual arguments here. But as I was saying, there's, a, there's, a, there's some really serious issues at the beginning, uh, how to do that. And um, from a lot, lot of point of view in Cornwall, there was, uh, was also some of the, um, the explanations for the site um, were also a particular issue as well in terms of um, the lack of agency, for example, for, any, uh, for uh, Cornish people in, uh, in sites run by English heritage. It always has this tagline of, the, of um, uh, England story. So people feel that, uh, that where is the Cornish history in this? It's in Cornwall, but there's no mention of that. Um, also, actually, I should mention, it's an air, that AS, um, what is it now? Uh, get the thing here. This bit here. That, um, yeah, here we are. The um, area, uh, this is um, a special advertising control. Uh, so you can't just put uh, advertisements up and signs up. It's supposed to be kept um, free of all that kind of uh, stuff. So that uh, was a pretty good thing, discovery that that's there. Um, and uh, for all these things, they needed permission of the, uh, of, uh, the Cornwall Council, which is now a devolved government as well, a bit like London. It had... Um, uh, but that devolvement does not involve um, the control of heritage, which is a bit of a sore point uh, in, in Cornwall. Um, uh, let's get the next one down. Yeah. Um, so, uh, in a lot of these things... Oh, I should point out what, why I've got this here. If you haven't noticed, there's someone sitting there, and there's this, this sign up here. 
uh, alerting you to uh, quite a serious, there's a big rock, loose rock overhang at the top there, as well as things over here. It's a very dangerous spot, but people do, you go in there in the sun and there are people regularly sitting in that sort of area or with sort of like a towel out and lying in the sun and rocks hanging over them and so on. But it, it, it's in a way a, a good, quite a good metaphor for this, that people go in there. I, I'm not sure, some of them may be totally sort of um, innocent of understanding what the hornet's nest they're going into, and some people may be impervious because they've heard it all before, so they just, they just go on with the inevitable. Um, I think that probably has a lot to do with it. So engagement with the Cornish. Um, now, that, that's also an issue as what is what constitutes the Cornish. Sometimes people mix up the confuse the two, fi two things, locals and, and, and Cornish. Locals have the same issues as anyone anywhere else. Uh, will it bring jobs? Will it over-commercialise the thing? Will it, will it cause traffic jams? All the usual things are there. But when it comes to the Cornish, the uh, Cornish are an ethnic minority and they're not confined to Cornwall. They're all over the UK, they're all over the world in different places. And these days they're all connected to the internet. I mean, there's lots of things I'm on in Facebook groups for... Cornish in Mexico, various parts of the United States, Australia, Italy, you name it. They're, oh gosh, <laughs> where to go? Um, so, uh, so there's a whole thing about um, the. Uh, it's, this is like often um, people don't really know what it is, so they they apply this sort of amorphous uh, Celtic identity to it. The idea that Cornish are not li are likely qualified or otherwise rational, so they don't often seek advice from people who might be accepted as. As, uh, as um, sort of representative in some way, um, and also fear that any kind of concessions will lead to some kind of overnight rebellion. Um, now, if you're familiar with Power of the Eye, there's this joke about uh, lookalikes, and uh, here we've got on this side, this is um, actually this, this Llewellyn uh, ab Griffith Vachan is over here, uh, and that is uh, Galos. Um, uh, the very similar statues, again, well, Welsh, Cornish, similar kind of thing. So you put up a very similar statue. You also mistranslate that's supposed to be ga Galos is supposed to be power, according to the English heritage translation. Actually, it means, uh, it comes from a verb to be, to be able to do things. Um, so ability, more than anything else. Um, uh, the Merlin twins, that's actually uh, uh, Danino Den in Scotland. That's Tintagel. Um, it's Celtic, it'll do. Um, next thing is uh, spirited uh, colonialism versus nationalism. The, as I was mentioning the presentation of Cornish sites as part of England's story. Now that really is extremely provocative in Cornwall. People really don't like it. Um, and, uh, and also the idea, it would be one thing if you say it's England's story, it's part of England, but it's, it's also the fact there's no international context to it. You wouldn't know that, for example, Tintagel, so King Arthur's supposed to be buried in Mount Etna, for example, in Italy, or the Holy Grail is in Valencia, or the stuff about, um, you know, uh, Gottfried from Strasbourg, who wrote a lot of stuff, the Icelanders, who in addition to do their, doing their sagas, also wrote a whole lot of stuff on King Arthur as well. None of that is involved there at all. It's all geared towards the English version of the story. No local legends, no international legends. Uh, here, this is an alternative thing. This is one done by, uh, this is a, a local uh, Cornish monument here to the 18, uh, sorry, the uh, 1497, one of the 1497, 1497 rebellions. This is uh, Thomas Flamank, who's a lawyer. This Joseph Van Gogh, the blacksmith, sort of almost like the Federalists, uh, two horses there. This guy was the one who did a lot of the talking and, and uh, um, provocative statements and so on. Uh, appetitive. So here, a, a problem with a lack of clarity between creative and inspirational use of mythology and substitution of historic. A lot of visitors, there was a study by Hilary Orange a few years ago where visitors expected, thought that the mythology was actually the story they're supposed to, was the true one. When they got there, they were all told it was it was actually wrong, that was the mythology. So people got very confused walking around, which is what's real, what's not real. And things in the gift shop all going to, all, all talking about mythology rather than the actual things that they're told were correct. Um, so it, this goes in again, what's this really about? Is it about money? Um, uh, or is it about actually uh, uh, presenting uh, heritage? Um, Nature versus uh, nature. Are we talking about um, things which are uh, 
uh, we're talking about the uh, the real thing, or we uh, we're talking about um, so thing a thing as it is, or we're talking about the interpretation of it, the inspirational side of it. And I just borrowed uh, Gary Larson's thing, hist- the schmistery. It sort of is a good term for the kind of uh, impression you might get. Um, now, three aspects of uh, uh, Plato's theory of uh, the soul cover these areas of the uh, chaos and conflict here. The first one is where everyone concentrates. People forget the, these other aspects. The appetitive and particularly the spirited uh, aspects of these things uh, lead to the ultimate failures of engagement in these things. And it's not just a one-off. It appears every time there'll be another controversy in a few years with the same things. Ultimately, the only thing that really can resolve this for English heritage is devolving. devolving. They, they partly devolve stuff to something called um, uh, the Cornwall Heritage Trust, who run a lot of sites in, in Cornwall. Um, but it, it, it's, just the, it's that label where it has England in it. That's, that's the issue that's, that causes most of those problems. I'm not saying if it's devolved, you'll have the end of problems, but they won't be English heritages. Um, <laughs> I think that's... Yeah, I think we're at the end. Um, oh, yeah. There. Right. <laughs>